This is the Barry Cable football followers yeah. throughout Australia yeah. know. Today was the same Cable in a different scene. He was one of the star attractions in a VFL spectacular stage in the streets of Melbourne today. And Cable is a star. Three Sandover medals, one Tassie medal, eight Best and Fairest award. Named in the All-Australian side twice and the recipient of so many Footballer of the Year awards, he can't remember how many. How you going, all right? What about today as you went down the motorcade and lots of people came up and said, good on you, good luck. They knew you so well. They identified with you. Um, what was the feeling as you drove down? Well, I guess it's like, uh, well, it was very good because it, I, I guess as a sportsman, or in that case for any sportsman, it's nice to think that uh, people obviously appreciate the, the, the things that you do on the ground. And I think that sort of was the first big thing that came through to me when they said, well, you know, good on your cable, or, you know, we hope you do the same next week. And, you know, it's just nice to think that people do appreciate what you do. What about the very, what's your earliest remembrance of playing football? How old were you? Oh, about, mm, well, at, at primary school, I guess. And, you know, you're going back in the early 50s, I guess, you know. 1954. I better not say that because it sounds so, such a long time ago. But, you know, it was back about then, 54. Were you a star in those days? Well, oh, that, that's hard, hard to say, I guess. I made the... Uh, school footy team. Uh, we had a primary school footy team in the country and we used to go around and play all the other country towns and uh, I was fortunate enough to be in the, in the school team and you know at that stage I thought that was really good. Even considering he's playing his 361st senior game, football still holds its fascination for Cable and any critics who maintain that he was too old at 34 or too small at 5 foot 6 would have had to eat their words after his performance last Saturday. But the hard knocks that seem part and parcel of today's game do seem to worry him a little. That's part of the game and uh, uh, if, if you cop one and it's fair, well that's all right. I mean, you know, you either recover or you don't. And in most cases, if it's a, it's a, if it's a fair bump, uh, you know, I'd say that most players can handle them. The only bumps that uh, are always hard to take and most players, I guess, find them pretty hard is, is what I always call the sneaky ones. The ones from behind or the elbow or something like that. But just the front on attack, uh, you know, most players can handle those. A lot of people would remember the dreadful knock you got from Lee Matthews in the interstate match. Yes. Did you have any feelings of revenge after that? Any sour taste? Oh, well, well, I did at the time because I felt that it was unwarranted. Um, and, I, you know, to me it was unwarranted. He had the opportunity to get the ball just the same as what I did. Uh, but, you know, that's something that's happened a long time ago. We hear a lot about the Barassi magic. How yeah. good is he? Well, uh, well, you know, he's obviously... Well, he's a great coach, there's no question about that. His record proves that. And uh, he's... Um, I think he's also... He's a man's man. Uh, he doesn't beat around the bush. He tells you what he wants. And uh, so, therefore, you know, you just get on and do it. Does he ever hold you over the coals? Oh, yes, he's... Uh, yes. We've had a few little words to say every now and again, but uh, I think, uh, again, because I'm older and experienced, uh, you know, I understand what he, what he wants and what he needs, and therefore probably uh, I don't get into as many tangles as some of the younger blokes do, like the Arnold Brightuses and the Brent Croswells. Cable is under contract to North Melbourne until the end of next season. After that, there's the possibility of coaching as well as lucrative media contracts. Meanwhile, he would be earning quite a considerable amount, but he's non-committal just how much in money terms football means to him. I've never been one to you know, talk about money because uh, money to me is something that, for example, uh, you know, we all work and so therefore we get paid for it and uh, I, you know, I'm not really interested what other people make and so therefore I would like to think that uh, you know, they're not too concerned about what I get out of it either. And it's just that I, I think that I get what I deserve out of the game and hopefully all the other players do too. Barry and Darrell being presented to the Governor, Dr. Abbott, and uh, Mr. Yeah, no, yesterday. Yes. Formalities dispense with. The rivals in tomorrow's game adjourn for lunch, where, under the watchful eyes of coaches Barassi and Hafey, they dined, sipped orange juice, and made polite conversation. 
At today's luncheon, the North Melbourne players were in the same room as the Collingwood players. Now, that seemed a bit strange. Was there any tension, any animosity? Well, I don't, well, I don't think so. Um, it was strange, I must admit. It's the first time I've ever been involved in a setup like that, but, uh, and particularly just before the game tomorrow. But no, I, you know, everybody seemed OK, and uh, we even said hello and all that business. But tomorrow, it will be a very, very different situation.